Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello, everyone. My name is Umar Hamid. I'm your host on the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategy, and advice on how you can become better, stronger, faster. Just before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you have a negative voice inside your head? We all do, right? I'm going to help you remove that voice in under 30 days guaranteed. Not only remove it, but transform it. So instead of the voice that sabotages you, there's one that propels you to much higher levels of performance and success. There's a link in the show notes. Click on it to find out more. All right, let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the No Limit Selling Podcast. Today, we have the privilege of having Jan Crowley with us today. She's a realtor. She's a coach. She's extraordinary. And best of all, she's having a great hair day today. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's really nice face to face. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, So I wanted to talk about, so world according to Umar, real estate at one level is a really simple business. And at another level, it's all about mindset and confidence and removing anxiety. And if we've got that taken care of uh, in real estate, you know, uh, the closing date could change, uh, issue with the house, financing, all of that stuff would come. But if we felt confident and powerful, we could be the surfer on the wave and not being crushed by the waves themselves. So mindset is critically important. Your thoughts on that statement? Um, honestly, I was just talking about this to a girlfriend this morning. There is a fundamental inherent flexibility that has to happen in real estate. You have to be able to look at your priorities and they change from minute to minute at any given time and reshift, right? So we're constantly kind of like turning that over in our heads. Which problem do I fix first? What can sit for a second? But I really wish it was normal because I feel like post pandemic, there's so much more flexibility in the workspace, but I feel like we kind of already had that in real estate, that ability to have that time freedom and really kind of craft your life around your availability and your business and go with the ebb and flow of your business. And I really wish we could kind of like place that into corporate America because it's so much more family friendly. Um, And I really like it. I really like it, but you have to you have to learn how to prioritize from moment to moment. That's been my experience. For sure. And I think there's probably areas in your life, Jan, where you are, no matter what's going on, uh, whether it's, uh, I'm not sure if you're a mom or not, it could be in mom mode or it could be when I'm playing or tennis it, or, or it could yeah. be somewhere else where you were just like a, a maestro at this. And there's other areas in your life where you don't have that same skill set, although it's the same skill set, but the context of where you're at doesn't allow you to be as flexible as you could. Uh, so yeah, it's really true for realtors. Like there's probably areas that where they're like fabulous, no matter what's what life throws at them, they can just basically make lemonade out of it and go. So let's talk about realtors. We're going to pick, we're going to stretch you and I. Are you ready oh. to stretch? <laughs> Are we going to pick on them? <laughs> no, no, we love them. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can come up with 10 areas where realtors struggle, where anxiety comes up. Not for every realtor, but you talk to a lot of realtors and you coach a lot of realtors. What's number, doesn't have to be the most important, but where is one place where realtors tend to get anxiety and struggle that if we could talk about it now, we could help them uh, resolve it. What's number one for you? Rest. Not resting enough? I uh, Turning your business off, um, going on vacation not missing family engagements that we have touted real estate as a 24 seven job. And that's so incredibly unrealistic. Um, And just to add to that, I would change (laughs) just to add to that. uh, Every realtor uh, comes into the industry. I get to be my own boss. I get to set my hours so I can be with my family and go to those events yeah. and do this and take vacations. But then they come in and it's a different rule book comes in. It's like, oh my God, I got to keep on working. Uh, my phone has to be on 24 seven. And yeah. so there's like a, a disconnect from one of the reasons they came into it and what reality they create for themselves. So why do you think realtors create that reality for themselves? Because it's of their own making, right? 
It is. Um, I honestly think a lot of real estate agents don't plan enough for their futures. I don't think that they divide those, you know, commission checks that they get in, they get in properly. So there's always this feeling of lack, right? Or this um, neediness when it comes to the next phone call and there being another seven to 10 grand on the end of that phone call as well. Um, I really think a lot of it comes down to like mismanagement of money, especially when you first start out in the industry and you really are living paycheck to paycheck, allocating all that improperly, I think is a big mistake. So I think that's uh, absolutely true. And there may be another element here. I'm not sure you'll have a better sense of this is when you take someone who is incredibly attractive and incredibly successful, uh, basically a Hollywood actor. When you hear a lot of them, it's like, I just did this blockbuster movie and I've won an Oscar. And they really think when they go <laughs> home, I'll never act again. Like there won't be another gig. And it's like, wait a minute, 80 yeah. minutes of money and you've got this highest achievement, but yet that fear of, not being good enough or the next paycheck not coming seems yeah. real to them. So I wonder if part of that also happens in real estate where it's like, what if no one likes me anymore? Do you think that's going on or not so much? I mean, I definitely think there's that vein of, you know, you're only as good as your last deal, mm -hmm. which is just crazy to me. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's the chase and I, it's not my favorite way to build a real estate business. I don't like cold calls. I don't um, really like, leads, you know, paid leads. It's just yeah. not my favorite. Um, I really, yeah, it's, it's kind of like on to the next always. It's like, what's next, what's next, what's next. And it doesn't really, not all people are wired that way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like not everybody's into the hustle and the grind per se. Some people really do want a balanced, organic, you know, referral based business. And that's not unattainable. It's, and to me, it's really healthy, but. <laughs> Absolutely. So what's number two? So one is, you know, not getting enough rest or, and really what you're saying is, you know, planning your life accordingly. So you get to do all the things that you need to do, including sleep. What's number two for you? What's the, another thing that uh, realtors struggle with? Um, I really think that if you focus everything inward on what you're doing, we were talking about mindset very briefly earlier. I think if you're, if you are feeding what you need, you understand what you are truly trying to attain and achieve in this industry. And you pour that same excitement for everyone striking their own path into the family around you. And your core support system is really solid and actually supportive from there you can build a fantastic business. I think a lot of real estate agents flip it and they pour so much into their business. And then at the end of the day, they come home and there's this lack or they've not given enough energy or fed into the relationships that are really going to like propel them forward and give them that internal like cellular confidence, right? To go out and get this business that they want. I feel like it's flipped. It's like, my, I need to feed my business right now and everything else can wait. And I think Jen, that's I'm doing this for you and the family. That's why I'm working so hard and yes. alienating myself. And nobody, and everybody. Cares. And nobody yeah. cares. All your kids know is that they miss you and you miss out on stuff and they just want you to be there and they want to ask you questions and they don't want to impose because you're so busy. Your spouse is like, oh, okay, well, we're just going to get to the next level of, you know, maybe when, when he or she or my partner achieves this, then we can like finally chill and relax. It's, it's the exact opposite way that um, I feel like we should be constructing our lives <laughs> and our businesses. Yeah, absolutely. So it's the quality of life we've been, we're talking about so far. What's number three for you? What do you see in realtors where they struggle? Number three. Um, I feel like a lot of realtors don't ask for help and mentorship early enough. I think there's a lot of ego and, and pride. And I think um, we can overcome that pretty quickly. And I think a lot of... Um, Outside of that, a lot of brokerages should have a better system to welcome agents in um, and help them build their businesses, you know, with a mentor, like firmly in place, someone to really help them take a good look at their business. What's kind of interesting is that, you know, in our society, and maybe it's a worldwide thing, but especially our society, we all believe we're snowflakes. I'm snowflake <laughs> in terms of, you know, I'm unique. And it's like, no, yeah. we're all made of freaking snow. 
And there's so many repeatable patterns that we all do that it's almost like when a realtor comes in, someone needs to sit them down and say, okay, here's what this is going to be like. First, you're going to be lost. You don't know what you're doing and you feel like a loser, but <laughs> stick with it. You're going to learn all this stuff as you go. And then you're going to focus too much on your business and not as much on your life. Number three, you won't want to ask for help. You can almost like map this thing out and here are the signs to look for it. You're not unique. It's going to happen. And here are the signs. And one day I'm going to come to you and go... Have you noticed these three signs? And you're going to go, uh, no. And then we're going to realize that <laughs> I need help. So we almost need that expectation set. Like you are going to do this, but here's what it's going to feel like. And let's plan for these landing spots as you go, just like a stage actor. I'm going to be here. This is my mark. And this is where I break down and I ask for help. Or yeah. this is where I get like my ego kicks in and I'm like, I'm the best thing in the world or whatever. So yeah, I think setting those expectations and getting a mentor that can do that in a loving way is, is essential. Yeah, I agree. I really agree. I think it's important to find people who have a business that really resembles what you want to build and study them. Really, really study them. Absolutely. So I'm going to add number four for you. Why don't make you think about others? So I was talking to this uh, beautiful lady yesterday. She's in Nova Scotia, Canada. And she says, you know, when I go to show houses, you know, a lot of them are farms that I don't dress in high heels and super elegant anymore. It's just like I'm going in basements with mold and mud and critters. And so I just, I'm myself. Being your authentic self is so critical to being successful in any aspect of your life including real estate. So pretending that you're someone you're not does a disservice to you and the people that you are uh, doing business with and your colleagues. Thoughts on that, Jen? Be yourself? I mean, honestly, in the, in the end, that's, that's what's going to be so attractive about you. When you, and you know, there's a very real difference between like, I talk about authenticity all the time. I think like yes. who we are at home, like if you go home and you shut the door and you're a completely different person and you have to like turn off, you know, your, or even turn your on work persona. Yeah. Yeah. Like the work part of you, I think it's a, it's a constant struggle and it really feeds a lot of negativity into what you're trying to infuse into work. So honestly, I would say, you know, be who you are unapologetically. And that is who is going to be attracted to you. Like the people who are on that vibration or are feeling your energy, or they're like, that is exactly who I want to work with. They're going to come right to you. After that, it's a breeze. It's a no brainer. Absolutely. And I think part of the reason people don't do that is they have uh, issues around self-worth, which I think is probably number five. Like what is your self-worth? And people have self-worth that is fabulous in public. But soon yep. as uh, they're by themselves, it's like, I'm useless. I'm a loser. Uh, oh, it's so exhausting pretending to be someone I'm not. So how do you help uh, realtors that you can clearly see is like, Janet, you're freaking amazing. I love you, but you're not seeing it for yourself. How do you guide people through that? Um, I think in that vein, I think soft skills are grossly overlooked. And when you're first starting out in real estate, your soft skills are going to be what prop your entire business up. Yes. Your ability to, you know, mediate and read people, your intuition, um, li literally just how you naturally manage, right. A, an right. entire transaction from start to finish those things. Most people who are drawn to real estate inherently have those skills and right. that's not, you're going to learn while you're getting licensed. It's not really, you're going to, it's not something that you're going to necessarily like get a book on and right. learn how to do properly. So I feel like if you show up authentically and you understand your skill set, you can build onto that very, very naturally because outside of that, it's the rules and the regs the laws, the contracts, all that stuff that there is a book for, it's right there. But you have to understand that every nuance about your personality and how you problem solve, how you communicate, it matters. It matters so much because a lot of times your first impression is that very first hello on the call. And I actually had to like teach myself how to bring it down. I used to be like a chihuahua, high yeah. energy. 
and I was like rapid fire a thousand words a minute and I really learned to like slow what I was going to say down and so now everyone tells me you're so calm like you're so so nice talking to you and I'm like I know it's (laughs) on purpose (laughs) very nice so I'm going to throw out number six and then you've got the next three sisters so you better get ready so uh call reluctance Mm. is the bane of a lot of realtors, like not wanting to talk on the phone or feeling uncomfortable. So that is a critical skill set that we need as realtors. Your thoughts on call reluctance? (laughs) I mean, prospecting and those touch points with your clients. I really feel this is where like you lean into the ebb and flow, right? Of Mm -hmm. your own personal rhythm and how you like to run your business. If Mondays just suck for you and you don't want to talk to anybody and you shut everything down, but like for some reason on Thursdays, you're cloud nine, you're super chatty. Yes. Thursdays is when you make your calls. So it's not even, it's not even so much. It's almost like taking time blocking to this ultra personal level. What does your actual like energetic level look like throughout the week? When are you engaged? When are you not engaged? And giving yourself the permission to disengage. You don't want to prospect today and you don't want to call these people today. Fine. We've got text. We've got email. Don't stop communicating, right? Simply because you don't want to be on the phone. That You've got a million ways to do it. That's that, again, that flexibility. Brilliant. But how do you uh, guard against, oh, it's tomorrow's going to be a better day. Today I'm low energy. Then tomorrow it's like, oh, you know, the morning isn't a good time to call people. Afternoon would be better. But you know, they're probably doing lunch right now. People do that where they start uh, forestalling things they need to do and it becomes a habit. So I understand what you're saying that you need to kind of be in sync with your energy and what you want to do. But also you don't want that to be like a crutch that allows you to not prospect. So three months from now, you're starting to death because you didn't do what you were supposed to do two months earlier. Then you're scrambling like, oh my God, next paycheck. So how do you guard against that? So indecision for me generally comes from a lack of clarity. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you want or what you're trying to achieve. It's going to be very difficult for you to make any move, right? To make any step forward in any process that you've given yourself. So I think, honestly, deconstructing the real estate industry and taking out every aspect of it that does not speak to you and is not aligned to how you want to run your business. If you do not want to call leads from the internet, do not put your money into it. Don't make that even part of your business plan. I think if you know exactly what you want, the list becomes so much shorter on what you should do. And I'm not a big fan of should, but what you like should be doing for your business. Yeah, if that's your dream and that's your plan, you need to execute it. It's not like I don't feel like it. It's like make a freaking plan and then follow it. You should. But if you don't feel like it, figure out why. Because if it's truly Agreed. something you do not enjoy doing, take it out of your business. Yes. Remove it. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. And then at another level, it's like uh, parenting. I don't like, you know, setting rules and stuff. It's like, shut the hell up. Your kids need that. So stop being a wimp and freaking yes. do it. So in your business as well, there's certain tasks that you need to do. And that's just the business. If you don't do that, it'll be a hobby forever. So I get what you're yes. saying and I agree with it. But also sometimes you need to woman up and go do it. So how do you balance the two from, uh, because I agree, you can design your business the way that you want. It's like, okay, I want to build my business through relationships and I'm going to focus my time doing that. And I'm going to be, so let's say Jan is really good at relationship building. Let's say you're really good and you're an eight out of 10. If Jan focused her efforts solely on that, within a month or two, she'd probably be an 8.5 or a 9 out of 10. Going from a 9 to a 9.5 might take a year because all of a sudden now you're coming into mastery of the craft and you may never reach 100. But I agree, if you know this is my strategy, then you need to commit to it and do better at it. So Jan, we're at number seven. What's number seven? What do you want to throw out there? What is number seven? So, so far um, we got resting. We got to support your family, be able to ask for help, be yourself, self-worth, call reluctance. And now we have. Here's a good one. Yes. Here's a good one that I learned from one of my, one of my past team leaders. Right. And he was incredible. His name's, his name's Alan Stan. He is incredible in that if there was a new technology, a new platform, he would dive right into it. 
He didn't care about being embarrassed. He didn't care about what he looked like. He just took the nugget, the ball and ran with it. So he was one of the first agents that I saw like really diving into live videos, um, very organic, you know, listing videos for yes. his properties. And he just didn't care. He really, truly did not care about showing up, screwing it up, looking like a fool. He had a blast with it and it imbued this excitement for trying new things, getting on Zoom, being on TikTok, going on Facebook Live. It's like, whatever, who cares? Because people just want to interact with you and they want to see the messy and the quirky. And, you know, you can go back and watch it a hundred times and see how many times you said, um, or how much you talk with your hands. Cause I talk with my hands and just own it. It's part of who you are. And the second, um, you start putting yourself out there more and getting more comfortable with it. It's joyful. It really is Absolutely. fun. What I heard you say was jump in. If there's a new yeah. opportunity, jump in. Are you going to suck? Probably. So I'm going to do number eight. Okay. I'm a firm believer, Jan, that you have a God-given right to suck. <laughs> Here's why I say it is, so issue number eight, sometimes realtors want to be, I need to be perfect. I need to be professional. I need to be at a certain level of this. And oftentimes, well, I'll start doing TikTok when I have it perfected. And I think if we give ourselves permission to suck, because if you did something, Jen, that's a stretch for you, whatever that thing happens to be, I suspect you're going to come out of the gate a six out of 10. You're not going to be a two out of 10. And uh, coming in a six out of 10, the doing of it allows you to see what you did well and what you didn't do, do well. Or you could ask a friend, it's like, you know, hey, I was doing this like commercial and it didn't turn out perfect. This, oh, this was really good. Tweak this. But the next time you did it, you'd be a seven and an eight and a nine and we get better. So embrace that you're not perfect and do it anyway, which is an, an extension of what you just said. But I think if for my clients, it's like, you have a God-given right to suck, use it and just go do it. And just the doing of it teaches you so much. It really does. And you can, but see, just pull that out of like whatever professional lane you're in and just look at anything that you've learned from scratch, anything. You had a starting yeah. point. You had a starting point when you, when you, you know, got into your first serious relationship or the first time you had a kid, like, or when you started a new school, like you start somewhere, you always start somewhere. It's that inaction and that you know, that hesitation, that's yep. what we're like really pushing against because like, where does it come from and how do I eradicate it? That's what I'm always looking for. Excellent. So you get number nine, nine and I get number 10. So what would you like to put up as number nine? If there is something in your business that you are really uncomfortable with, but you actually do want to implement it. So let's say it's converting internet leads. Yep. Only way you're going to get through it is to do it. That's it. You're going to have to fumble through. You're going to have to have some people hang up on you because they're whatever we're struggling with, whether it's personal stuff, professional stuff, I can do all of the inward work, like all the looking in I want, but there yeah. are some, so let's take relationships. For example, if I have like unhealthy dynamics and relationships, I take it inward and I'm like, nope, this is my new boundary. This is what I'm going to fix. This is going to what I'm going to work on moving forward. That's all great. Lovely for you. Until you implement it in a relationship, you do not actually know how you're going to show up. And I think that that rule, you know, should be applied across the board. You should be looking inward, figuring out what stops you and then push right through that. Whether it's you need some healing, it's a trigger it's just a straight up fear or it's your ego getting in the way, whatever it is, like you just got to push just through do it. situational application is going to propel you forward. You got to do the scary stuff, especially if you want it, if you want it in your business and you want to build it into what you're trying to create, then just dive in. So two things to add to that. Number one, uh, Jen, uh, I've never done this kind of transaction before. But my broker's right behind me. We're going to get you through this, but uh, let's make this happen. And just, you're nodding your head that, you know, if it was any situation, I just right at the beginning said, hey, this is the first time I'm doing this, but we're going to get through this. Human beings are compassionate yes. and they want to help. And I think just doing that is a, going to be helpful. And number two, if there's something you really, really need to do for your business and you're really God awful at it, yeah. throw some money at it. <laughs> I'm going to hire an assistant that's yeah. really good at this. 
and yeah. I'm going to pay them 20 bucks an hour and they'll be working five hours a week doing this. It'll be the best $100 I spent because it's going to allow me to do what I need to do. So worst case, throw money at it or trade. You take care of these kinds of customers and I'll help you over here where I'm good at. Uh, you can find a way to do that. Yeah. So here is number 10. Realtors don't do a good enough job of setting expectations. So <laughs> right at the beginning, it's like, yeah, this is the journey we're going on. And we're going to give you our best guess what your house is worth. But the market is going to dictate the price. And if you get more offers coming in and the price goes up, you know, don't hold that against me if you get more money. But if we're not getting offers, then we need to re-examine what's going on. And I expect a uh, referral at the end of this. So I'm going to do a phenomenal job. I expect you to tell me when you're feeling nervous or uncertain, don't hold on to it. Call me up. I'm your realtor. I'm going to get you through this. So just setting all that stuff up at the beginning, I think is critical because it just lets everybody know where we're going because most people get panicky when they're lost. Yeah. And real estate's an easy place to get lost, especially if that's not your full-time occupation. So it's up to you as a realtor to show the map and your level of confidence and certainty and setting those expectations makes it super easy for your client to go through that journey as well. I couldn't agree more. So, I mean, that's actually how my team operates. We front load all that education because we want every decision to be made with full confidence. Because when you're in the middle of a transaction, right? Like as soon as you get all the paperwork in order, you start looking at the houses and you start getting into the, the meat of, I want to put an offer in. Every time you have to stop the momentum of the deal to like explain something that you overlooked before, you, if you do that enough times, the clients are not stupid. You look like you are not detail oriented and you look like you do not have a handle on it and you don't oh, communicate yeah. all of the details that they need. So there is this very real question mark that starts to form in their minds. Every time you're like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I should have said that to you. If we're doing da, 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 all this stuff. It's like you left out this entire chunk that we clearly of information that we clearly needed to move forward. It starts to create those seeds of doubt. And whether or not they know they're consciously doing it, your clients are looking for ways generally on how you disappoint them, how you don't show up, how you haven't prepared them. Because we as an industry already have that stigma that we're just in it for the paycheck and we're like churn and churn and burn and churn and burn. Them. Yeah, absolutely. So we're very education oriented from the very beginning. We have a very robust buyer consultation that we walk everybody through because I like my clients to make confident decisions. Ah, love it. So uh, two last questions. Number one, what makes you happy? Hmm. As a human being, what makes you happy? My family and vacations. Love That's it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a great and incredible fiance, like, in love beyond all imagining. Oh. We have four children together um, and we really want everyone in our home to be happy. And we pour all that time and effort and love into them. And it just melts my heart. That's beautiful. Melts my heart too. <laughs> what is a mind hack you'd like to share with our uh, viewers and listeners that would help them be more uh, better performance, more efficient, sexier, sleep better, be healthier, be more loving? Like what would that uh, tip be? I would, if I could do anything, I would eradicate the negativity from all of our, what do I want to say, from our narratives. I think we have a lot of people feed into this incredibly negative narrative and that I would love to eliminate, even to the point of when people say the universe is testing me. Yeah. I believe that the universe tests us. I believe that the universe in and of itself is good. What I think actually happens is every time we try to make those changes to better our lives, better our situations, be better, more whole and holistic people, the universe presents us with opportunities to show up as that newer, more improved version of ourselves. I think if we could do that, not seeing as like I'm being tested and why is this happening to me, but why is this happening for me? Game changer. Ah, for me. Love it. We're still live by. 
Jan, thank you so much for being on the show. I had a great time oh, chatting with you and coming up with this cockamamie 10 point list of where realtors <laughs> need to improve. So random, but I love it. Cheers. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming and that is the fastest way to get better results. 